State of the Union night, Congressman Meek from New York. Welcome to the show. Good to be with you. So the president spoke. I said this already. I thought, you know, hey, listen. So he said it's going to be a short speech, a little longer than short, but we liked it. No, it's actually because I timed it. <laughs> it Somebody was, did. <laughs> it was 15 minutes shorter than last year. All right. So Ooh, we're shaving off 15 right. minutes a year. It was an hour and 15 minutes last year. It was exactly an hour tonight. Bam. Couldn't have said it better. So what was the standout point in the speech for you? There was a number, but I think that the way he began and the way he ended is a reflection of where we were in the beginning and where he talked about when he first came on the national stage talking about hope and bringing us together no matter what your race, religion, or ethnicity, that we should look at and focus on those things that we have in common that we bring together as opposed to those things that separate us. So he talked about those same inspirational, uh, gave the same inspirational message today, and that we've got to focus on what we need to do 10, 15, 20, 30 years from now. So what do you say to all those folks who, you know, people who didn't stand in the chamber, which is always fun to watch, some people say, it's like musical chairs, you know, when you're watching it from outside <laughs> the chamber. But there's a lot of people that sat down when the president, you know, really talked about how great America was. And to me, it seems as though, like, They've made, they, are, they, they want less in America just because he's the president and not the opposite way around. Well, I think you're correct. And I think that's the wrong thing to do. And I think that that's what he was talking about, that we need to change our politics. And our politics should be based upon compromise and trying to look and focus on those things that we can get together for the benefit of the country. Uh, and I would hope, you know, I was sitting with some Republicans, et cetera, and I try to work with some folks on the other side, that that's what we need to do. We don't need to demonize one another. We need to figure out what we can do that's going to help the country. And when he started talking about, for example, which is clear our economy and a, the, the importance of education and the importance of understanding and making technology work for us and not against us, uh, that's something that everybody should talk about because, you know, when you think today what the economy is going to look like 10, 15 years from now and what it's starting to look like now, if you don't have a skill, you're not going to have a job. And so therefore we've got to make, because of technology, so we've got to make sure that our folks are more educated. And you've got to be, and you have to have the ability to afford the education today, so we've got to make education cheaper. So I don't know why everybody wouldn't stand up to do that, because as he talked about all of the great Americans that preceded us, that made us who we are, if we're going to have them again, they have to be educated. And that's what makes us great. And so to me, that should have been something that would unify us. And I know that I intend on talking to some of my Republican colleagues uh, to say, can we focus on that? Can we work together on those issues? And so talking about education, so we recently saw the, re the reauthorization of No Child Left Behind, now in its new form, a lot of the bad parts of the bill rooted out, a lot of the good parts of the bill put back in. The president tonight talked about the need for early child, or, you know, more early childhood education expansion. What do you think is next um, from your, on your district's perspective in, 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 when it comes to fixing public education? Well, I think that we, we have to have a, a new curriculum to a large extent. Uh, we've got to look and think forward also because the way the school systems were set up and some of the curriculum that we have, it's outdated in my estimation. You know, even the school calendar year, and I know my daughter gets upset when I say this to her, but it was set up when we were an agricultural society. We're no longer an agricultural society. We are a service and technological society. And so even our curriculum and the core course that we're talking, that, we, that we're teaching uh, is important. When you talk about math, we have to do geometry and algebra, but we also sh should be talking about financial literacy because it's important that we understand how to invest make money and how to utilize this dollars so you can't be taken advantage of uh, in the global economy. So we've got to shift the core curriculum of education to fit the, the, the society that we currently live in and with a view toward the society that will be in the future. A couple more questions for you. So one, if the president spoke for an hour, timed it, um, what was, if there's one part of the speech you didn't agree with, what would it be? That I did not agree with? Yes. Well, um, I agree with the one part that the Democrats disagreed with because I'm with the president on that, and that's dealing with trade. I think he was right. I think, again, that was forward thinking, that we need to make sure that with uh, TPP uh, and talking in Asia that we lead the way. We don't have 
China set the rules. We set the so rules. So what do you say to those that say, like, you know, if we pass the, T if we pass the TPP, like, for example, 40% of certain states, 40% of manufacturing will be taken out their state and taken to a foreign country? That's not what trade is all about. What trade is about is, right now, those countries have access to our markets. We don't have access to their markets. So what we're talking about with trade is leveling that playing field and making them open up their doors also so that we can build things in America and sell it there. And it's also to level the playing field. If we don't get engaged, then you know some of these countries, if they follow China's rules and we allow China to go in, there will be no environmental standards. There will be no labor standards. But if we are engaged, we set the environmental standards. We set the labor standards. We set the rules of trade. And hopefully, eventually, even China will come involved so that we can level that playing field. So some would so, are, but, but there are, I mean, others so are it's, it's different. See, I know you know, it's difficult. I mean, you know, some But what I'm saying is what's different, and I think what people talk about oftentimes, trade and trade agreements which level the playing field is not outsourcing. And what I think individuals are really troubled about is outsourcing. Well, and I mean, the reason being, and I, I'm just being devil's advocate, yeah. right, is this, like, we see what happened after NAFTA. When NAFTA happened, we lost a lot, it was it in direct outsourcing to Mexico, right, where we lost car factories that were once in Flint, Michigan, that were relocated to, right across the border to Mexico, and that cost American jobs. So but, I think that's the frustration yeah, that members of Congress but, are But feeling. I think that you have to re, you have to really examine it. Number one, uh, NAFTA, I'd be the first to say, was not perfect. It was the first of its kind, and we've gone a long way since NAFTA to fix it. And in TPP, because Mexico and Canada is a part of it, we actually fix some of the bad parts of NAFTA within the TPP agreement. Those problems that were there that we didn't realize because it was first generational are addressed in TPP, and Canada and Mexico are part of it. That's number one. Number two, I would agree with you, there were certain jobs that were lost in certain areas. You use the automobile industry. And so those jobs left Michigan, some of them. Yeah, Detroit, Flint. But if you look at car manufacturing overall in the United States, it's up. It's not all concentrated in Michigan anymore, but if you go to the BMW plant in South Carolina, if you go to the a Honda plant in Alabama, if you go to uh, the, the you know, uh, various foreign cars that are now being manufactured throughout different states in the United States. And if you look at NAFTA even, where the granted, the job shifted and some uh, unemployment happened in Detroit, Michigan, if you look at Texas, there was great job gain when I talked to my folks there. So there was a shifting of jobs as opposed to a losing of jobs. Same thing that we've had in but, I mean, New the, York. But I mean, the, the, they would argue that, that, that there would be a, that's a shift in quality as well. Or a, like, so you, a Michigan job is a $60,000 job and a Texas job is a $25,000 job. So the, the, the corporation makes the money, but the consu but the, the worker doesn't make the money. I'm just being the devil's advocate. No, no, but I'm talking about the jobs that are being created. And I'm also talking about, and I think the president talked about that because this is the new technology and the new economy that we're in. And what he also talked about is where, if you have to take another job and you're not making that money that you made in the other, we should have some insurance for that family as, uh, so that they can continue their uh, retirement fund and that they can continue paying their mortgages or rent. There are mechanisms that we can put in place to try to help that worker for this new economy that we are now engaged in. So let's and the president talked about so that. So let's just focus for a little bit. So the president, uh, when, uh, we'll, we'll let you go after this, but I, so the president talked about foreign policy quite a great deal. And I think he did a really good job of sort of really right-sizing ISIS is what I want to say, right? He painted them as they were, a whole bunch of people on pickup trucks riding around in the middle of the desert uh, and not, you know, what, what, what we consider a world war, seeing that, you know, World War II was fought by Hitler's Nations. Germany, right? Who was a manufacturing power? And uh, what do you do? You agree with that? And well, absolutely. Uh, and where are the Republicans getting ISIS wrong? Well, what was happening is is fear, okay? And what the Republicans are peddling, and what ISIS is counting on, that we make the American people fearful, and thereby change our very way of thought and living, which has made us great in the first place, because we're fearful that those 
uh, uh, individuals who are on the back of those trucks that you just talked about who uh, have a perverted sense of Islam and causing people to uh, self-engage uh, in terrorist activity, uh, what we want to do is uh, not go to that level. We want to take them out. But we don't want to panic and be fearful because those people can't bring down America. But we want to take, as he said, and the president is systematically utilizing a plan to take them out, and to a great deal, we have to do it with our allies. So who becomes tremendously important? We've got to make them step up, as he said, and do their fair share. So when you look at, you know, when I first came to Congress, the first things that I said, we needed two countries to really step up big time and try to work out and be partners with the United States, who we have problems with somewhat to a degree now. Uh, and we're trying to figure out who does what. One is Russia. But they've got to play a part of the global stage. Two is Turkey. They're huge and very important in the global uh, struggle against ISIS and uh, dealing with in the international because they are a Muslim nation primarily also. Uh, three will be China. You know, we are all interconnected. Something goes wrong in China, it affects us in the United States. So we've got to look at all the partners that we have, work collectively together as we are doing currently in Vienna with those nations to talk about how we can collectively wipe out the thugs that call themselves ISIS or Daesh or whatever they want to call themselves. We've got to wipe out the thugs. Thank you, Congress. Right. We appreciate you. My pleasure. <laughs> all right now.